hello, welcome at whatever time of day you're joining. So this class today will start with some yin and go into some somatic movement. And I actually have a meeting right after this class with uh, my teacher in my somatic movement educator program. So I'm probably gonna be sneakily preparing for that meeting um, teaching some of this stuff. So you might see me look at some notes. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to start, uh, I'm not gonna use a mat. I probably won't use any props, but for your yin practice, if you know you like to have support for certain movements, uh, please gather your props. For yin, I recommend that people have around them simply what makes them feel comfortable and supported to just have props near, whether you use them or not. Um, and I had a request for upper body yin. I'm gonna include some of that today, but I'm not gonna do a full upper body yin practice today. It affects according to the lens of oriental medicine. Good boy, you have to go lay down now. That's a good boy. According to the lens of oriental medicine, the energies, the support systems in the upper body are different from the lower body. Upper body works with different organ pairs. So, um, I'll include a little bit of upper body. So Vicky, sorry, but it's coming. I'll do one for the upper body soon. Please start in child's pose. Including you, Oz. Lay down. Start in down dog if you're an actual dog. A laying down dog. Lay down. In your child's pose, you can have arms back or arms forward. Knees together or knees apart. Let me grab my handy hourglass timer. And what I'd like you to begin with, so simple in theory, so simple in concept. I mean, maybe, maybe for you it's a simple theoretical concept. This idea of letting go. Relaxing, releasing, dropping, undoing. So if you feel like you have way more weight moving towards the head rather than the hips, you could stretch your arms forward and use the arms as a tool, as a prop to send the weight back into the hips. I'm gonna be here for a few minutes I started with my knees right under me. My legs are together-ish. I will, before we're done, let my knees go wider. So allow the body to melt and morph into gravity's embrace. Like whatever allows you to drop more. I mentioned the idea of yielding in a different class. We could bring that into play here. Yielding your weight, consciously letting it go. And this practice of consciously yielding, letting go, releasing, relaxing into gravity, not only is it a uh, 
a quality, a skill, a, a reflex. It's a reflex. It's a primitive reflex. I've mentioned it many, many classes ago. Tonic labyrinthine or labyrinthine, labyrinthine reflex. And that, uh, we call it tonic lab for short. The capacity to let gravity pull the cells, the cellular intelligence, the cellular orientation towards the earth, towards gravity's pull. And letting this act of allowing, landing, settling, yielding, to inform the nervous system of not only where down is, where support of earth is, but in that it gives us a sense of space, the opposite of down, up and out. We know where down is, we know where up is, which is a big deal for a baby who comes out of a watery womb from their little ocean of existence into consciousness embodied on the planet. It's a big transition. And we need a reference point, and here it is. I turned my head the other way. So if you've got one ear down, I recommend switching. And let us never forget, let us never take for granted this constant ongoing presence of support for the planet, of gravity, of presence of being, not doing, simply being. And that the earth, our original mother, our Maha mother, she's a little happier now than she's been over recent years. She's a little happier now in the last six weeks that everyone's been doing less. Let this all not be lost on us. Let us embrace this new way to be less active, but more engaged, right? I've been less active, but more engaged. Let me learn from this new normal. Coming into week seven, Massachusetts governor gave us the formal word to continue to shelter in place until May 18. For the greater good, for the most benefit, for the most beings, I will engage. I will follow suit. Not my will, thy will be done. From here, if you can, simply let your legs slide out from underneath you. Stretch the arms long like Superman pose. Any movement of the hips, legs, body that you want. And let's come to lay on our backs with left side long. So if you sweep the legs to the right, and I like to put the longer side leg on the bottom. So I like to cross right ankle over left. You may have learned it another way, the left ankle on top would be the other way. And if you prefer that, keep it. I have my reasons for enjoying the longer leg on the bottom more. I feel like it gets uh, at my deep psoas muscle way more clearly. So I drop the lengthening side thigh bone. If you have your reasons for a different setup, follow your instincts because the body knows. 
the soma nose. And then the upper torso can sweep to the right also. I like to take my right arm down by my side and left arm either overhead or hand behind the head. And if you look down to the right, then the left side neck can also open and breathe. And so tonic lab is still here, that that dropping, that calling of all the cells' attention to move down, and now down is behind us. So intelligizing the back body, illuminating the back body with gravity's call. And so if your left hip is light because you side-bended to the right, then let that left hip bone pelvic calf fall backwards. Same with left side ribs. If they were a little peeled up off the floor because of the extra length there, invite them to fall back. Everybody behaves differently. And when I say everybody, I'm talking about all the players in my body and your body, I think it's a safe bet. What I'm about to say is probably true for you too. Everybody, all of the cells, the bones and the muscles and the blood and the organs and the skin, everybody behaves differently on the in-breath compared to the out-breath. On the inhale, there's a lot more tension Things tend to hold on a little bit more. They get a little bit more engaged. And with the exhales, the active tension releases. And there's a, a settling which creates a spreading, a relaxing. The in-breath is the birthing breath, the arriving breath, the sunrise breath, the yawn. The exhale is the releasing breath, or you could say the death breath. It's the last movement of breath when you die, it's out. It's the yin breath. And which do you have more affinity with? No doubt you do. No doubt you, whether you know it or not, engage with the inhale or the exhale more easily, more willingly. Can you identify that habit for yourself, that pattern? Bring it to light and establish some kind of relationship with that pattern, whether it's one of utter acceptance and it's all good no need to change. I'd be careful of that mindset. <laughs> uh, someone just came to mind. Um, someone we all know, and most people I know don't love him. You could engage with that habit of preferred breath by tweaking, or tweaking, sure but reversing, turning it on its head. And that means go into the part of the breath that you don't normally linger in. For me, it's the exhales. I need more time with my exhales. Inhales are easy, I'm almost caught there. And I've been working with it for a while, so I've got good access to the exhales. It's just not my usual place to spend time in. So I have to do it on purpose. From here, keep that inquiry around breath. I'm going to shift this just a little bit. So 
if you take the arms more up and out and simply bend both knees towards the right, I'm going to stagger them a little like left leg is going to be a little behind the right leg and I'm swinging my feet more over to the right. So it's a twist, but it's also a side bend. So it's a casual supine twist with a little more invitation on my part to this whole left side. So how much you bend the knees or bend the hips, how much you swing the feet over, it's up to you. Whether you orient the nose to point up or to the right or to the left, follow the messages, right? So the body is in conversation with itself all the time. It has a playlist, it has background music, it has featured presenters. If you can follow the metaphors, right? It has a whole existence going on and I'm saying the body as if it's separate from the mind but they're the same right so if we look closely at what goes on in the mental space it can illustrate what goes on in the somatic space really clearly so if you have a tight mind if you have a busy mind if you have a eagerly ready and available mind, there's going to likely be, likely be some tightness in the body, a high tone, a high tonality to the body, meaning really eager and ready to respond, quick to jump, quick to react. And from the perspective of physiology, kinesiology, neurology, immunology, the study of all these systems, that hyper readiness to respond isn't better than a more lackluster, slow, delayed response. That's also not worse nor better. Just let that land on you, right? So if you're more of like a lazy type, you're like right on. <laughs> if you're a super go-getter, you might be like, wait a minute. <laughs> so just check. Check your response to that suggestion. You don't have to believe me. Go look it up for yourself. In the world of movement and neurology and kinesiology and the heart of these sciences, it's generally agreed upon that what is better is one's ability to regulate up and down that spectrum, to at will respond quickly and to at will offer no response. So the full spectrum of slug to hyperactive, all equally important. So watch what you, va you favor, because you will become it. And if you go down that road for too long, too many years, too many decades, it's harder, much harder to downregulate or to upregulate when you've been inhabiting the same small spectrum of engagement. I'm in for full spectrum practice. Before teaching this class, I <coughs> pardon me, sat <clears throat> quietly in meditation for a half hour.
Later today, I'll go for a run. Might lift some weights. So what's your spectrum? How full is your spectrum of engagement? From here, stretch the right arm long. Come to roll onto your right side. If your right arm lets you, use your head as a pillow. And then lengthen left hip. So extending left hip placing left knee straight down from your hip. I've got my knees bent. You can have more of a straight leg, left leg. The bent knee lets my knee actually drop more to the floor versus if my leg was straight. And for me, in my hips and my shape, it invites a lovely spreading opening here of the left side, as well as a offering of release in the front of the hip. Not everyone's hips are built the same way, so this might actually be uncomfortable and create some compression in the inner leg. Don't, don't just tolerate weirdness. I mean, some amount of discomfort, yeah. But check what it's about. If you're like a bone on bone kind of compression, I personally don't recommend hanging out there. You could put a little pad or a little bolster or a little block or something to get some distance, a hair's width distance between the bones. Bone on soft tissue, soft tissue on soft tissue, great, fine. But bone on bone, then we're asking for those bones to sort of be stimulated by each other and that can be Long-term, not what we want. So the arm, the right arm, if you can, sort of creep it longer. I got my palm down, internal rotation. So the whole outer edge of my armpit's on the floor. Inviting more spread and space under the armpit and between the shoulder blade and the ribs, as well as between the ribs. Begin to slowly, if you choose, you could just stay in slug, slug state, especially if that's not your usual, be there. Straightening left leg, continue to extend the hip, whether the knee is bent or straight, and now I'm taking left arm diagonally forward and opposite. I'm letting my head fall to the floor in front of right arm. So I teach this a lot. Maybe you've noticed. Side lying spiral. Left side is spiraling over across the line of the right side. So touching breath, or rather touching left kidney with breath. Left kidney lives somewhere to the left of your spine, mid back, just under or in front of your lowest ribs. It is possible you have like one big U-shaped kidney or one really big kidney on one side and one teeny tiny kidney on the other. It's entirely possible. And so you could hold the energy of kidney mind, kidney heart mind, that of wisdom. The virtue of the kidneys is wisdom. The emotion is fear. So if you tend to have a lot of fear in your life, a lot of fear in your cells, a lot of fear in your psyche, what would it be like to 
post your attention in the space of the kidneys and bathe in their fluidity. They're constantly purifying water in our body, making for better use of fluids in our tissues, making for better use of the raw materials given. That's a skill in wisdom. What's the best I can do with what I've got? Which might include fear, like fear might always be with you, but we don't have to necessarily be regulated by it or ruled by it. It might be just a tiny slice of our experience and we can include it, not hide from it or bury it or wish it was different. This is all wisdom work. From here, what I'd like to do, and I'm gonna spin around so you can see me better. This is some of that arm stuff. So if you can, tuck that right arm behind you. I bent the elbow a little, you can see there. The right knee for me is bent more forward. You could lay more purely on your side and have less intensity for the right chest. Please envision, please know that the shoulder joint starts at your breastbone, starts at your sternum. So feeling the reach of the right elbow behind you come from your sternum. So you're not simply prying open the front of the shoulder joint proper. That's important. And the right shoulder blade is snuggled towards your spine behind you. The musculature of the shoulder joint goes all the way to your spine. So from breastbone in front to spine and back, try to feel that whole piece engaging. Now the other uh, piece to this is not for everyone. So however you want to organize your legs is up to you. My legs are similar to where they were on the first side. But now I'm actually going to try to catch my left foot from behind with my left arm. So I've got a lot for both shoulders. I've got a fair amount for my left thigh. And this is all shaping some tension for my inhale. So I'm going to pause here. Find, reestablish a relationship with my breath in the midst of all of this. And I'm staying consciously engaged, right? There's nothing passive about this. Some of the muscles are yielding their effort. Some passivity in the musculature, but the mind is deeply engaged with its dance partner, the body, the two that are one. The right hand, palm, fingers, could actually press into the floor some, right? So you can add some engagement there and play with turning on and off some of those fibers, depending on how intense the tension is, the tug, the pull. So you can push back into it a little bit, let that part of your body know, like I'm here, I got you, we're in this together. Relax a little. Same with my left leg, I'm gonna kick a little into the hand, tiny, tiny effort. Feel the response, the results, I'm gonna exhale, let it go. So please don't check out Keep checking in and in and in and in.
Okay, I'm letting it all go now. Spilling onto my belly. You spill onto whatever surface is the most desired surface. And we're gonna take a minute or two here to just motor, either motor that out, which means you might have to squiggle and wiggle, or I don't know, throw some punches. I don't know what you gotta do to motor it out. Heavy sighs, you could simply absorb it and just land in some soft, right? So that's another inquiry. How to resolve the stimulus that you've just subjected yourself to you have to like get rid of it somehow or can you settle with it and again neither of those is more desirable than the other knowing what you need is most important and allowing the nervous system to resolve in the preferred way it's happening all the time with all of our stimulus comes in, the body registers, the body-mind registers, and then it decides. We move towards, we move away. And so much of that is happening completely under our conscious knowing. Uh, side bend to the left. So find your way to your back. Swing the legs over to the left. If you're like me, in this regard, left ankles on top, torso side bending to the left, left arm down by your side, right arm either overhead or hand behind head. Tonic lab, let the weight of the back body settle. Can you Recognize your felt sense of gravity's invitation and answer it by letting go into gravity's loving embrace, right? We're all going there eventually. We may as well practice. One of my teachers says, Ayurveda is the study of life. Yoga is the study of death. Ayurveda is the study of living well. And yoga is the study of letting go. And sometimes it's so paradoxical letting go might mean or suggest or imply that it's a letting go of who we think we are or who it is we think we ought to be, letting go of our opinions, our judgments, our ideas about ourselves and the way of things. And simply letting the cards fall where they may. And being a disciple to reality. What's your relationship with reality like? Are you always pushing back on it? You manipulator of reality? Are you hiding from it? A victim of reality? or a fugitive of reality, and maybe if we hide from it, then we're, we're more victims. What about a, a dance partner with reality? That's what I'm going for. It's like I hear the song she's playing. I want to dance no matter what. Sometimes it's a slow dance. Sometimes it's a lullaby. 
sometimes it's a fucking rave, man. here more of the arms out to the side bend the two knees tip them to the left however far you want to shoot the feet over to the left or have the knees and the hips bent so we've turned the pure side bend into more of a twist And there is the inconvenient truth, or maybe it's convenient, depends on your perspective. There's this simple truth that we all have some torques and twists in our structure, that we all have a little bit or a lot of scoliosis. And some of that came online in utero some of that came online in childhood. There's no clear medical explanation for scoliosis. The going theory is it's largely emotional, psychosomatic, or it could be just the long nine month yin pose in gesta gestation. <laughs> We're sort of caught in that. So these side bendy twisty shapes can feel very, very, very different from right to left. And that is 100% okay because it gives you a chance. First of all, it's informing you. It's telling you. Body's like, hey, this is what's up. And so then that wisdom mind, that ready practitioner, meets the reality of the situation and responds skillfully. So don't try to force left side and right side to have the same experience. But can you meet the realities, the truth of each side as they present so that some sort of balance can be achieved? Hmm. I wonder if we could get the Democrats and the Republicans to do that. Right? It's like it's the same concept everywhere. Here's what's happening. How can we meet it to bring the most good for the most beings? Oh, right. Not everyone in Congress wants the most good for the most beings. They want the most good for themselves. Sorry. Sorry. I'm politicizing. I'll stop, but it doesn't make it untrue. So I'm just feeling the pinch of that, the pain of that, the heartbreak of that, that sad reality. And letting it wash through. softens around the heart, lets my wings span a little more expansive reach.
side, lay all that down. All the pain and the bullshit from the political realms, a lot of the social interacting and the most The space is filled with the most conflict. If I let all that go, there's a warming and a melting through all my tissues and I, I get a little weepy and the tears flowing just a little soft release of holding. So let's bring that, whatever you got, I'm bringing that on to the left side. Stretch left arm a lot longer further under you. Bend uh, left knee in front of you. And right leg long, straight down, maybe a little back, or the knee bends. I'm gonna choose the bent knee variation to start. And so we're getting some side body upper on the left, lower on the right in this starting position. At the end of this little sequence, we're going to be in a shape, in theory, we'll be in a shape very close to this. So we're, we're touching this now, sort of priming, priming the body, priming the tissues. And I'm trying to breathe into the length on the lower right torso, as well as the length in the upper left torso. So it's like a diagonal. A moving breath, upper left to lower right. And then these places of compression, upper right ribs are much more squeezed together for me. And the left side waist is really squeezed together. So now I'm going to feel into that diagonal with breath, upper right to lower left. Yeah, 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 and that's much more interesting. So I'm going to linger here a little bit. Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? Next week when I start Zoom classes, I'll actually be able to hear you and see you. I hope you come along. So uh, there'll be less privacy, unless you, you know, turn off your camera and your mic and that's allowed. You're allowed to stay hidden. But if you wish for more feedback from me, that new format will provide it Starts Monday. Reach out if you want to be included. From here, right arm goes long in the space in front of you. Let the head roll off the left arm and stretch the right leg. Right arm, right leg in this spiralic configuration. Sort of teetering or perched on the left side, so like right side spiraling over the fulcrum of the torso. So like you can let the leg win a little more reachy with the leg. You can let the arm win a little more reachy. Reach with the arm.
And what if we started to plant the seeds here regarding that left shoulder? Remember from the first side, the joint of your shoulder joint starts at your breastbone where your collarbone meets your breastbone. And right now, and you could, if you wanted, use your right hand to trace the left collarbone. It's practically straight up alongside your neck. Right? Did you know that? Did you know that your collarbone can go vertical as well as on the horizon? It can swing behind you, which it will in a moment. I mean, in theory, it can. It's designed to do that. What has your relationship been with your shoulders that has manifested your current shoulder reality? It's not unchangeable. I mean, everything changes. That's a rule. That's a universal cosmic truth that transcends time and space. Everything changes. And then the job of the practitioner is like, yeah, I'm getting in on that. I'm going to participate in that in some fashion. At the very least, know it's happening. Maybe I can do something about it. Let's start to, um, you might have to tip forward with the torso, right? I'm going to stay facing you this time so you won't see my left arm. Start to bend the left elbow behind you. So if you have to gather more to your front body to do that, like you could come all the way onto your belly, right? And start there. From the breastbone, you can use your right hand again. Feel that collarbone. Now it's like reaching behind you. It's fascinating. <laughs> I think it's fascinating. And the left shoulder blade snuggled right up against your spine. So we've taken the whole left shoulder and like, rolled it back, invited it back. Uh, right hand can be in front of you for support or hand on hip. I'm gonna catch my right foot and go for that. It's a pretty epic yin pose, right? It's, it's uh, involved, but I've been doing this a while, so it's not a big deal for me. You might notice that I'm using my left Heel, I've sort of got my left foot active here and I'm trying to keep my right knee behind me. After a minute or so, oh crap, after a minute or so it will probably stay there more on its own. So now the trajectory of breath that I'm interested in. Right low belly or front of right thigh to left chest. In the front body. That's spread. That's the most spread out pathway. Front of right hip to front of left chest. Remember, you can pressurize with left palm, left fingerprints. If you do that, there's less weight in the elbow. So be interactive, right? You, there's a little bit of yang energy there. And just check yourself because that could be your habit. And you could really override the yin benefits with that yang activity. So constant vigilance, like what am I doing? How is it affecting me? Am I doing what I think I'm doing? Am I doing what I want to be doing? The next place my mind goes for my breath is, it's like the opposite from before, back of the upper right, so right shoulder blade, to left SI joint. Upper right to lower left in the back body. That feels nice.
feel free to make sounds. I can't. <laughs> Maybe you are. Maybe you've already cussed at me a couple of times. That's awesome. I don't care. I love you anyways. Uh, but any sounding, moaning, vibrating, humming, hi-ya-ing, I think is a good practice. Ha, 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 ha. Wow. All right, I think I'm about done on this side with this one. Let him go, stay longer if you like. Spill to your belly and either rest on your belly or child's pose or motor it out. Whatever feels good to you. And at this point, a slidey surface is gonna be better. So you go ahead and motor out that yin sequence. We're gonna spend just about 10, 15 minutes tops uh, with some somatic movement. And I'm just checking my notes here. So what I would like to go through with you guys are some of the early um, reflexes for building limb coordination. I'm not going to tell you the names, so I'll, I'll tell you the names. So the first one that I want to play with is called Symmetrical Tonic Neck Reflex, STNR for short. You can see why I need to keep studying. And this is um, building our spinal strength and our limb strength and our coordination. So if we all meet in a child's pose, but have your hands on the floor and your elbows bent. So just checking in with some of the phenomenon for you, anatomy files. Like myself, the limbs and the spine are all flexed. And we're gonna to toggle between spinal and limb flexion to everything being extended. Extended hips, knees, arms, and spine. And then back again. And extend again. So depending on your back, you might have your arms way out in front of you, like I'm showing. Or you can have them right under you, and it's a bigger back bend. So let's do this a few more times. Slower or faster, I vote slower. <laughs> Oh, and what I didn't say, and I really should have, because I'm going to need to know this, is that it's initiated by the neck. So, okay, pause. Neck. Neck initiating the movement. So the neck flexing brings us into ourselves in this scenario. The neck extending takes us out of ourselves in this scenario. So neck, like you're swallowing into this shape and helloing out into this shape. So it is a toggling between energy out. Remember you could be much lower and energy in. So pause and either the extended limbs and spine or the flexed limbs and spine. And the next one I would like to do is called symmetrical tonic lumbar reflex. Nope. Yeah, we're gonna do that. So symmetrical tonic lumbar reflex, it's similar, it's similar but different. So it's initiated from the lumbar. And start with knees bent, toes tucked under, hands on floor, elbows bent, but extend your spine. So it's like cow pose, but with your elbows bent. So limbs flexed, spine extended. Initiating from the lumbar, spine flexed, 
limbs extended. So straighten your arms and legs and find cat spine. Initiating from the lumbar all at once. Extend spine, flex limbs. All at once, flex spine, extend limbs. Symmetrical, tonic, lumbar, reflex. There's a way you can do this uh, much less strongly. In fact, babies do it the other, the one I'm about to show you before they do this one and you'll see why. So it's either, uh, if you come to belly down, limbs flex, spine extended, initiated from the lumbar, spine flex, limbs extended. So really lifting my belly up from the lumbar. Flex the limbs, extend the spine. So it's sort of like knees, chest, chin in yoga, with the exception that chin is up. And then really gather the belly and stretch your limbs long. Face is down, pubic bone is down. It's so like cat pose, face plant style. I'm gonna go back to the first version. Cow with bent arms and like down dog with rounded spine. Okay, pause and rest. Pause and rest. Two more. I'm gonna put a blanket under my knees. Um, I injured my kneecap last winter. That's not quite right when I put weight on it. I hit a place that feels owie. And <laughs> sometimes the blanket doesn't help. Wowie. Okay, so this next one is called symmetrical tonic neck reflex. Uh, and s oh, never mind, we did that one. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, that's it. So let's just pause. Pause and rub your knees if you need to. So having done that step down the middle, let's do some side to side stuff. And for the side to side stuff, start in your Sphinx pose. And I'm gonna slide my elbows on the blanket, or keep my elbows on the blanket to slide. And then if you put your brain and your head and tail lengthwise, and you side bend, on the side bend to the left and bring that left knee up and out. This actually feels quite good. And going to the other side. So side bending to the other side and bringing that knee up and out. And simply go back and forth. Now there's a lot to ask of the hips and the spine. So hopefully the previous movements including the yen, has warmed up the joint spaces so you can get a lot of that inner thigh to the floor of the bent leg. And it's a clear sense of the tail swinging towards the bent leg. So movement in the lumbar, movement in the whole spine. And if you can get this smooth transition from, front, from right to left, and that on the floor the whole time is either the top of a thigh or an inner thigh or a pelvis or all of the above. Right? There's a lot of contact with the front of the pelvis and the inner and the front thighs on the floor. If you're not quite there yet, then simply stay here and let the front body pelvis groins open. But if that's going pretty good, and you can get some stick of that foot on the floor, whether it's the inner foot or the top of the foot, push the floor away now and slide. Sliding like you're crawling. And I've gotten to a point too far to the side of the room, so I'm gonna push back with my hands, one arm at a time. 
and it sort of fishtails the body back. When left hand pushes, the body goes to the right. When the right hand pushes, the body goes to the left. Now I've reached the wall on the other side of the room, so I'm gonna start crawling again. This time I'm gonna crawl more towards the camera. So ideally the legs are doing all of the initiating. The arms are just dragging along for the ride. Next time you reach the end of the room or the end of your space, then just push back with your arms. It's called homologous movement of the upper. And the crawling is homologous movement of the lower. So one more time, but we're gonna add a pause. <clears throat> so the next time one knee comes up, pause and roll to that side. So this is actually a reflex. When a baby gets to this point, that's a significant um, indicator that there's this either des desire or a response to some sort of stimulus that was maybe behind them. Other side, like you're gonna crawl, but nope, let's pause and look around. So in this way, we're getting a 360 degree view of the whole room, of caregivers behind us or loved ones on the other side of the room. And still keeping with that side bendy business. Can we keep going? And like a little boat as you roll and go to the other side. <clears throat> and then looking around and rolling back. So it's like the side lying position to a boat. And then back again. I'm actually gonna keep going the same direction. So you're looking around the whole room and you're ambulating across the room as you go. I really like it. And then back again. To sitting. From sitting. <clears throat> you place one hand behind and extend that same leg forward and switch. So I got right hand down, right leg extended. Switch, left hand behind, left leg forward. Goodness gracious, can you go lay down? Ozzy, go lay down. We're just gonna go back and forth in this way. Right arm behind, right arm long, left arm behind, left leg long, Pick up. And then back again, and again, and again. And again, can we look forward when we do it now? Look forward, look forward, look forward. Pause here with right arm back, switch legs. So right knee is bent, right arm is back, look backward. Now left arm back, left knee bent, look backward. Switching. Next time, right arm is back, right knee is back. Tip to the right side. Step your left foot forward. Lower your hips. Wrap, spin back around to your original facing. Left arm back, left knee bent. Step right foot around. And go back and forth in this way. So we're sort of combining those steps then eventually stand up Ooh, and then come back down, roll around, left arm back, left knee bent, right foot steps around, step up. We're skipping a whole lot of developmental steps here. 
uh, but that's the case. Keep going. You can go faster. You can go slower. You can test your balance. You can kiss your dog. On one of these, I'm going to come up and stay up. This one. This one. And then as you walk around, feel for some, go ahead and walk around and feel for some of these same diagonals. Like walking is a contralateral movement. Right leg forward, left arm forward. Left leg, right arm forward. Right, so there's this diagonal, diagonality <laughs> through the parts of the torso that we were breathing into on some of those sideline things. So simply walk around your space, swish your hips, swing your arms, be a little sassy. Don't worry if you're classy. And then uh, it's here where I'm gonna leave you. You could certainly spill yourself back down and rest or love your dog or both or keep walking right on out the door. Please keep feeling and studying and responding, stimulus and response. And may you be well and in good health, both body, mind, heart. Thank you. I love you.